actress Gina Davis has lived in some interesting homes on screen, such as the time she haunted that pretty old house as a ghost in Beetlejuice. But in reality, the home that she lived in for over a decade, located in Pacific Palisades, Los Angeles, was also stunning and one of a kind. So today we're going to check out Gina's estate, including its epic and somewhat creepy custom fireplace. Also, Michael and I dropped our very own house tour of our new home that we moved into earlier this year, so go and subscribe to our personal channel if you want to see where we're living and more of what we're up to. In these videos, we don't reveal any addresses, and even though I've done a house tour of my own place, please do not show up at any private residences because it's not safe for anyone. American actress Gina Davis is one of Hollywood's formerly biggest leading ladies of the 90s, who's probably best remembered for her roles in films like Thelma and Louise and Beetlejuice. After spending time as an exchange student in Sweden during her high school career, Gina returned home to the US to earn a drama degree from Boston University and work as a window mechanic for Ann Taylor. She then landed a spot on a modeling agency's roster and soon afterwards began to book smaller parts in films like Tootsie. Her big breakthrough came in Tim Burton's Beetlejuice, where she played one half of a recently deceased couple haunting their former home. From there, Gina would earn Oscar nominations for her other films before marrying director Rennie Harlan after five months of dating. Four years later, Gina would file for divorce the day after her own personal assistant gave birth to Rennie's love child. Soon afterwards, Davis began dating a neurosurgeon by the name of Reza Jarahi, and by 2001, they were said to be married. This was something that may not have actually happened going by the paperwork that would follow in the wake of their divorce. During the course of their relationship, Gina and her husband or live-in boyfriend or whatever he was, picked up a home in the Pacific Palisades for $4.2 million, a residence that Gina would keep far longer than Reza. And this wasn't just any home either. When Gina finally put it on the market, the internet lost its mind when they got a taste of Davis's very eccentric style. Hey guys, it's Kara back with another exclusive house tour here on Famous Entertainment, today looking at the longtime home of Gina Davis. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit me up on Instagram to chat, and now, let's get into this video. Tucked away on a quiet cul-de-sac that overlooks Sunset Boulevard and is set smack dab in the middle of the posh Los Angeles neighborhood known as the Pacific Palisades, is a five bedroom, six bathroom spread that measures 5,146 square feet. This is Gina Davis's longtime home, and it's one she acquired with her former partner back in 2007 for a reported $4.2 million. The property's Mediterranean vibe extends far past its charming exterior, with the red tiled roof and carries onto the interior, where the lines are clean, the floors are mostly wood, and the ceilings are all high. Then there's that mantelpiece in the living room that, well, we'll get to that a bit later. Worth the wait. Gina would wind up spending 13 years in this home, and the mansion would undergo some serious renovations under her watch, but the exterior of the home would largely remain unchanged over the years. Here, there's charming ivy draped over top of the three-car garage, adding a pop of color to the cream-colored stucco. Moving to the inside, there's an assortment of textures, and it starts with the front foyer boasting some antique Italian floor tiles, a personal touch Davis had been thinking about adding for a while. She said about the selection. I love the 18th and 19th century Italian towels around the house. Some are on the floor of the entry hall, some in the kitchen, and the master fireplace is surrounded by them. If you follow those antique floor towels from the foyer all the way into the living room, you'll find a space with a couple of eye-popping emerald green vintage glass light fixtures, as well as that frightening fireplace, which acts as the room's focal point. Actually, come to think of it, this thing might be the focal point of the entire house. Set between a pair of huge windows, Gina Davis is custom-made mantle depicts in white plaster, a wild and untamed ogre-like face, with the fireplace lodged directly into its open, gaping mouth. I swear it looks exactly like a scene from Buffy season 2. Anyways, according to Gina, this piece is supposed to represent the Roman god of Neptune, and I don't know how well you know your Roman mythology, but to me, that definitely looks a lot more like Saturn devouring his son as imagined by Goya than it does the son of water. When asked to comment on this rather unique piece, Gina Gina would explain, instead of a mantle surrounding it, there's a large sculpted figure of Neptune's head and long hair, and his mouth is the fireplace.
fireplace. I had it made to copy something I saw in a book on Italian villas. Well, it certainly was a choice. I don't know if it's because this thing seems so out of place in an otherwise modern looking home, or if it's because the white on white color scheme has it looking like an optical illusion. Either way, I can't take my eyes off it. Then again, it could just be because there's a giant and terrifying looking face with a wide open mouth sitting there in the middle of Gina Davis's living room. And once this image hit the internet, I wasn't the only one with conflicted feelings. A ton of people chimed in to comment on the design. But at the end of the day, I think we need to remember that Gina Davis probably isn't as quite as normal as we might remember her to be. I mean, not only did she star in Beetlejuice as her breakthrough movie, which is about as eccentric a film as it gets, but she also fell in love with Jeff Goldblum for a short period of time while starring alongside him in what's easily one of the most disgusting body horror films of all time in The Fly. Then there's also the little known fact that Gina nearly qualified for the US Olympic archery team in 2000 when she was 44 years old. So in a sense, Gina has always found inventive ways to let her freak flag fly, including this fireplace. Maybe we just weren't paying close enough attention. But she also seems to enjoy the commentary that her fireplace has created online. Anyways, that's enough about this, let's jump back into the house tour. Once we finally move on from that living room, we'll discover a separate window line dining room with a pair of French doors that lead out towards the backyard. Only a few feet from there is Gina's remodeled kitchen, a high-end cooking space arranged around a huge island with a snack bar and dark gray stone countertops. It also features some red brick floor tiles, bright blue cabinets, and a patterned tile backsplash. The nearby den is anchored by another fireplace, but this one is surprisingly normal, having been carved out of antique stone and accented with some colorful tiles on the floor below. The main level is rounded off by two guest suites, both of which provide direct access to the exterior garden. Each of the bedrooms in Davis's home has a unique aesthetic. One, for instance, boasts a Japanese style mural on the wall with what otherwise appears to be a beach theme. The three other bedrooms are located on the second floor and the main suite is the biggest of them all with its high vaulted ceilings, a sitting area with patterned tile around the mantel, and glass doors with seafoam colored frames that lead out onto a private terrace. Davis told Mansion Global about her suite. The sitting area in there is so big it almost looks like an extra living room. It also has very high vaulted ceiling, which I just love. Her master suite also offers two walk-in closets alongside two bathrooms as well, one of which includes a gold-rimmed deep soaking tub. Also located on the top floor is a private study slash office space, a library with built-in floor-to-ceiling shelves, and a safe room hidden somewhere in the home. Finally, there's a backyard that features a covered terrace that steps down to a sun-drenched dining area with a built-in barbecue grill. There are also some carefully maintained and well-groomed gardens down below, surrounded by tall, mature trees that shade most of the outdoor space. The only thing missing is a pool, which is always a bit strange to see in Los Angeles. After living in this property for close to 13 years, Gina would decide to list it in 2020 for $6 million, almost $2 million more than she paid for it originally. She wouldn't quite get that, but after less than two months in the market, the home sold for a reported $5.6 million, which is still a pretty decent return, depending upon how much those rentals and that gigantic fireplace set her back. It's unclear where Gina Davis has moved since selling her former house a little over a year and a half ago now. But once her new living situation is finally revealed, we'll fill you in on all the details. All right, everyone, that's gonna bring this house tour to a close. After looking at Gina's homes, what did you think? Be sure to let me know in the comments down below, or tell me which celebrity houses we should cover on here next. Please remember to like, subscribe, and turn on your notifications before you leave. I'm Kara, feel free to follow me on Instagram to chat, and I'll see you all in another video. Bye!